All right, so you guys know I love to talk about products long term and the DJI Smart Controller is no different. So today I'm gonna to talk about my experience with this product for one year. Let's get into it. What's good guys, Ken here and you're watching Original Dobo and today we're talking about the Smart Controller after one year of use. I got this back in February of 2019. I think it was just right after CES and this thing has been fantastic and it really has changed the way I use my Mavic. Now, if you're buying a smart controller or thinking about buying a smart controller, you probably have a Mavic 2 Zoom or Mavic 2 Pro, or maybe you're using one of the enterprise products. But uh, either or way, this thing's fantastic. It was supposed to work with the Phantom 4 2.0. I don't know whatever happened with that. There was beta firmware at one point and I haven't heard anything more of about that. It, it has received an update um, since then. Back in January, this got another update that added some new features to it. Nothing really game changing. And to be quite honest, I don't use a lot of the features that this thing touts because for me, it's all about simplicity. But anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the controller firstly to see how it's held up over the course of one year's time. So as we look over the controller, I mean, it is pretty much untouched and unfazed. And I throw this in my backpack, uh, basically, you know, just sort of haphazardly uh, bring this around with me and there is nothing, no blemishes, no scratches. I haven't had any issues. I've dropped it a few times and it's pretty much come out unscathed. Now, one thing to remember is I did put a screen protector on this. I've had the same screen protector on this since I actually got it last February. There was an issue with my screen popping and there still is, like if I press on this side here, it does pop on me, but it hasn't affected the way I've used it. And I've never actually sent it into DJI to warranty, which is probably a dumb decision now. But at the time when it was first happening, these things were so limited and it was so hard to get your hands on one, I didn't wanna give it up. So I just never worried about it and it hasn't been an issue at all. So definitely get yourself a screen protector. That's going to be really important. They do make some cases for these, which do help in case you drop it. Um, but I had one on here at one point when I was at spin up, but I took it off because it just sort of hindered the way that I use um, this D pad right here. So that's the only reason why I'm not using any sort of case on this, uh, this controller, but all in all, I absolutely love it. Let's go ahead and pop the uh, sticks back in here. And that's one of the great things about this is that it is so compact, it just slides right into my bag with, with just ease. So um, something that I have noticed is turning it on. It does take a little bit longer now. I think the cache is probably getting full and it does take a little bit to actually connect to my Mavic as of recent. I don't know if that's just because of the firmware updates or I probably do have to clean the cache out, but that's about the only thing that I've really noticed. Um, all in all, the speed of this hasn't dropped off. It's not like my Crystal Sky where I noticed the Crystal Sky progressively got laggy. This, I've had no issues with lag. If I hit go to drone, this takes a little bit. This portion right here where it actually launches DJI Go, sometimes I've noticed it does take a little while for it to actually go to the point where it's going to enter into the drone. But beyond that, really hasn't been an issue. A lot of times I will um, leave this on going from location to location just because it's so much faster than turning it back off. As far as battery life goes in the past year, I'm still averaging about four and a half hours of flight. So that's flight, not total use time, but that's flight. So if I'm flying continuously, I can get four hours of flight time out of this before I do need to charge it. Sometimes a little bit better. It just all depends on the weather. If it's super cold out or super hot out, it's not gonna do as well. That sweet spot is about 80 degrees, um, 75 degree weather. Like this time of year in Florida is really great. I can get some outstanding battery life out of this um, component. Um, I used to use like a little lanyard thing and I had, you know, this screen secondary. I still use that sometimes, but I don't use it very often because again, for me, this is just really, really simple. And that's the whole reason why I wanted this is because it's so simple and easy to use. It just makes setting this up, getting up in the air way quicker, way easier than, you know, typically, you know, what you would do with your phone. You have to plug your phone in, connect it. And yeah, so this is a lot easier. 
Um, when I did my six months review, I talked about how I was having issues with GPS. I haven't had issues with that since. Um, I've been able to set my home point and have this thing track and land back where I take off within just maybe a couple of you know inches and sometimes feet. Really hasn't been a problem. I don't know what happened initially. I guess I wasn't using dynamic home point or I wasn't updating it um, as, as I should. That was my fault with that. And that was, I misspoke when I said that this did not have GPS, but it does have GPS and it works just fine. And I don't have really any issues. The only problems I've really had with this drone or with this drone, with this controller has been updates. So sometimes when you want to update this and if you go into your configuration uh, and you'll go to like, let's say um, system updates. Let's go back down to system updates. If you go to system updates and you hit check for updates and if there is a new update available, when it actually goes to download that update, that's the only time when I've ever noticed that I've had an issue. Sometimes it wouldn't actually install the update from the tablet itself, or I should say from the controller itself, and I would take this over to my computer and have to run DJI Assistant to be able to get the update to go through. It's not really a big deal. The only time it becomes a big deal is let's say you only have an iPad or something and you're using this, you're not gonna be able to get it updated unless you get you know one of your friends or buddies to update it with the assistant. But beyond that, that's the only issue I've had with this at all. Some people have talked about the range about this smart controller. And, you know, I really haven't had an issue with the range. When I first started flying with this, I would leave the antennas up like this. And I wasn't getting really the best amount of range out of it. Obviously, this would make sense to a lot of pilots is to have the ten antennas up like this. But if you flip them down like this, you'll actually get better reception and you'll get better control with your drone. I mean, that's that's the way that it was intended. I don't know if many people knew this or not, but I didn't know that at first. But ever since I've been flying with it like this, I still get pretty reasonable range. Haven't had any problems. It's been more than enough, more than enough. I mean, if you need to be flying this thing seven miles, you're, you know, that's not even legal at that point. You can't fly it seven miles because you can't see it seven miles, but you need to be obviously flying safely. And this thing allows me to fly safe. I don't have any disconnects, no interference, no issues. I haven't had the app crash when I'm flying. And that's the biggest thing is that this is much more stable than my Crystal Sky. A lot of times when I would fly with the Crystal Sky, the app would crash mid flight and I'd be like, where's my drone? And I would have to reconnect. It was a scary situation often, but I don't have that problem with the uh, smart controller, which is, is great. Actually, I have less problems with the application on the smart controller than I do on my iPhone. So if that tells you anything. Um, as far as third party applications, I have the Amazon App Store, but I really haven't installed any other applications. Another, another reason why you may have some pause to purchase in this is if you're using Drone Deploy. Drone Deploy does not have um, an application um, in the Amazon App Store that works with the smart controller. So you'll still need your smartphone. Um, I did install the DJI Fly app. I figured just because it did have an editor on there, I was like, oh, I can you know quickly edit files if I wanted to, but it doesn't launch on this, so there's almost really no reason to have it on there. Um, but third-party apps, I mean, are a little bit limited on, um, on this uh, controller just because DJI did not build an app store, which if they were smart, they should. Um, but they didn't. Again, if we ran a benchmark on this, it's probably suffered a little bit since the first time I've run a bench test on this. Obviously, because I haven't done anything throughout the year, uh, but that's to really be expected. I won't even let me run the benchmark anymore, go figure. Uh, but again, that's really not a big deal. So all in all, after using this for a year, I've been really happy with it. Like I said, no major show stopping issues. And quite literally, every time, every time I fly my Mavic or Mavics, this is in my backpack. This is what I use. I hardly ever use my phone. I know I made a video talking about how I was going to switch to using my iPhone, but still it's so inconvenient at the fact that people can call me. It doesn't have the same ergonomics. Like this smart controller to me just feels so comfortable in the hand. And that's what's really important is, is the way I can maneuver the sticks, the way I can maneuver the Mavic and still have access to everything, my switches, 
I mean, it's just so, so invaluable. I can't say that enough. And the ability to screen record to an SD card is, is really clutch, especially if you have an issue and you need to prove it to DJI. It's so simple to screen record. You have all your log files, everything you need right there. You also have access to sending the signal out to an HDMI. So if you have spectators or in like some instances like me, I work with realtors and they want to see what I'm doing. I actually have a wireless tool that I plug in, keep it on a tripod and I can give them a monitor and they can sit, you know, in their car, whatever, and watch what I'm doing as I'm flying. So really, really um, cool. But all in all, if you can't tell, I am very, very happy with this. Like I said, it's been an absolute dream to use no problems and with some of the newest updates they have it, the ability for you to do live stream although i don't do any live streaming from my drone i just never um, really really found any reason to live stream um, using a drone i never found the footage looked that great and a lot of times you know people um, would get a lot of stutter and lag on their end so it's just really no reason but again your reasons for buying this may be different but if you're a professional or even a casual flyer that wants to simplify their flight and they have a mavic 2 this is a way to go there's no guarantee that this is going to work with future mavics although i hope fingers crossed that dji allows this to work with their future drones because honestly this thing is fantastic and they can get another two to three years out of this unit but anyways, that's just my experience from using this. I know this was a little bit more of a ramble, but I wanted to at least let you guys know what I thought of this after one year. If you enjoyed this style of a conversation video, be sure to go ahead and drop this video a like. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do so as I try to update on products long-term. And uh, yeah, as always, stay original.